An electric guitar, they say, is a musician's best friend. We begin this series with this beautiful 1950s Fender Broadcaster guitar. This guitar belonged to the guest deceased son, who had a great love for music and guitars. It's a unique guitar, made by the company Fender in 1950, and it belongs to the Broadcaster series. It, however, has some unusual features. One, the finish on the guitar neck doesn't match that of the body. The neck is an original broadcaster neck, dating to around 1951. It is a Fender body. This, I believe, is a reissue from their vintage reissue series, probably made in the, around the 1980s. The pickguard also could be original to that of the 1980 Fender bodied guitar. The neck plate, the pickups, the wiring is the original cloth wiring, the control plate, all the, all the parts on this guitar, the tuners included, are original to the original broadcast. Okay. This piece, which is still highly functional and in good condition, is valued at about eight to ten thousand dollars. I'm going to keep it and continue playing it, continue to love it and enjoy it to honor my son, Jason. Are you serious? I'm serious. <laughs> Another Fender Stratocaster makes the list. This time, it's a 1962 left-handed Fender Stratocaster. This guitar belonged to the guest father, who received it as an 11th birthday gift from his father. As earlier said, this is a Fender Stratocaster, made in 1962. The guitar was very popular at that time. All the great rock bands at the time, the Ventures, the Beach Boys, they all used this guitar. This is unique. It's a left-handed model. Also, it has a special fingerboard, known as the slab fingerboard. Later in the year, they changed to a different style of fingerboard. The serial number shows the year the instrument was made. All the white is still in good condition. Overall, the guitar is in very decent condition. Instruments are highly desirable today because of the way they play, the history behind them. Being a left-handed model, it makes it a little bit harder to sell because there's fewer people out there buying them as, a, as opposed to a, a standard right-handed model. It's valued at about $55,000. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> Next is this lovely guitar which brings back fond memories. It belonged to the guest father-in-law who was in a cowboy band in the 50s. Upon his passing, he willed it to his son, her husband, and it has been in their family ever since. The guitar, which is a Fender Esquire, is quite a beautiful piece. It's quite popular, notably played by several famous musicians. It is the guitar that... Stephen Stills built a career on. It's a guitar that David Bromberg built a career on. It is the model of guitar that Bruce Springsteen built his career on. It comes with its original bridge cover, which was famously called Ashtray. The bridge also bears a serial number indicating that the guitar was made between 1950 and 1952. The screws used, however, are special screws, known as Phillips head screws. And that tells me that... It was made at some point in 1952, because prior to 1952, yeah. st straight screws. Oh. Straight screws like the screws used on the pickguard. It's also in wonderful playing condition. The appraiser values it at $40,000. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> my husband will be very happy. <laughs> Oh, so. my dad is smiling somewhere. So. <laughs> That's terrific. We move to the next guitar, which is a 1957 Fender Stratocaster. This guitar belonged to the guest father who loved music and playing musical instruments. The guitar, which was made in 1957, has a maple neck. This neck was made up until 1958. This is called a skunk stripe. The other thing that lets you know that it's a 57 is that it's a two-tone sunburst. This finish, instead of being black to red to yellow, is black to yellow. It's a non-laminated plate over the tremolo area of the back. At the front, the neck has a maple fingerboard. I took the neck off earlier, and inside of here, there's a date of 857. And 
that matches with everything else that I saw on the guitar before I did that, so it made me feel comfortable in thinking it is that. The pit guard also matches the ear, and its screws look like they've never been removed. The tremolo bar, which was lost, is easily replaceable. The guitar is still in very good condition. It is valued at about twenty-eight to thirty thousand dollars. Gosh! Oh, so, my dad is smiling somewhere. So <laughs> that's terrific. Next, we take a look at this 1962 Sonic Blue Fender Stratocaster. Guest bought the guitar at a pawn shop for $135 in 1965. Made by Fender, it belongs to the Stratocaster series. It has a unique Sonic Blue custom color, a very rare color used by Fender. This color was first used on 1956 Cadillacs before they adopted them. They were, however, not popular, so not many were made. The popular custom colors were Olympic White, Candy Apple Red, and Lake Placid Blue. And what has really sent these kind of into the stratosphere is the fact that John Lennon and George Harrison had a pair of them. This relation made them the mythical color for an early 1960s Stratocaster. This guitar, which is still in good condition, is valued at about $60,000. Well, that's good. Good to know. We move on to this Rickenbacker guitar that the guest brings, which belongs to her husband. He got it right out of high school in 1977. It's a Rickenbacker model guitar. Well, Rickenbacker, Adolf Rickenbacker, is responsible for inventing and producing probably one of the first electric guitars, which was a Hawaiian. It's the Style 331 light show guitar and was made in 1971. What I'm loving about it is it, it, it has this great sort of light mechanism inside that when you play it, it lights up. This is very rare, as the generators that power the lights are usually burn off and don't work anymore. This exquisite guitar is valued at about $15,000. My word. It takes my breath. <laughs> we return to another Fender Stratocaster. This time, it's a 1957 Fender Stratocaster. It also comes with its original case and amplifier. The guest bought these items from a friend in 1961. This guitar, which is a Fender Stratocaster, comes with this beautiful blonde finish. And you can see the serial number right there, and that shows me that it's sometime in 57, but I think quite late 57. It's made with a fabulous, nice-feeling neck, which makes it easy to play board, black dot inlays, original decal, untouched, original pickups, original whammy bar. It also comes with the original tweed case with red lining and a period Fender Deluxe amplifier, which is in decent condition. The guitar, together with the case and amplifier, are collectively valued at about forty-five dollars to $55,000. My word. It takes my breath. <laughs> Next on the list is a guitar famously regarded as a pure rock and roll machine by musician Eric Clapton. This guitar, which is a Fender Stratocaster, belonged to the guest husband's grandfather. It comes with its original case and amplifier. The serial number on the back plate, although usually not accurate by a year or so, is usually a decent way of dating the piece way to really date the guitar would be to pull the neck out and, and to read what might be either penciled or stamped here at the end of the fingerboard. Pulling out the neck reveals no stamps or writings of any sort. It's not an issue, as Fender was inconsistent with putting neck dates. Fender got word about this and switched to rubber stamps in 1961. It's in remarkable condition for an instrument this old. The amplifier is also from 1959. Inside, on the label, there is a production order number. It is I, E, I standing for the date 1959, and E for the month of May. This lovely guitar and amplifier are valued at about $25,000. Let me know in the comments what you think it's worth. At the end, let's see who comes closest. Value, $30,000. take a break from Fender guitars and we look at this lovely 1964 Gibson ES335 guitar. 
This guitar belongs to the guest who traded his 1939 Chevrolet for it in 1971. Made by Gibson, this guitar has a maple body with a rosewood fingerboard. The guitar has a maple body with a, a rosewood fingerboard. It is one of two designs made. The other one is the Les Paul. It's a, a combination of the solid body and the hollow body, which gave it kind of the best of both worlds, and it was able to eliminate the feedback you often got from the hollow body guitars. It came out in 1958 and went through other variations, having different pickups on it. They had what was called PAF pickups, and they discontinued those in 1962 and went with these. This model guitar was used by a lot of famous artists, such as Chuck Berry, B.B. King, Keith Richards, and Eric Clapton. The guitar came in different color variations, this being the regular sunburst. This iconic guitar is valued at about $12,000 to $12,500. <laughs> Next is another Gibson ES-335 guitar. This time, it's a 1968 model. This guitar was gifted to the guest by his grandparents when he was a kid. This iconic guitar, made by Gibson, was first produced in 1958. It has some unique features. The thin line, hollow body, and arch top construction all contribute to making it a great piece. And the biggest thing about it is it was the first guitar with humbucker pickups in it and the thin line body. It also has a trapeze tailpiece instead of a stop tailpiece seen in other guitars at the time. It's nice an example as you will find. It's just spotless. It is valued at about $7,500 to $8,000. Wow. We now look at this beautiful 1940 Gibson L7 guitar. This guest traded $800 worth of dill pipe for this guitar when his daughter needed it for guitar lessons. This guitar, which is an original Gibson guitar, has a lovely tweed case with stripes on it. It's valued at about $3,500 to $4,500. Right. Let's see if we can top the previous item. This guest brings a guitar he got from his brother to the show. The guitar, which was made by the company Fender, belongs to their Telecaster series. After the introduction of the series in 1952, they became very popular among country western musicians and also rock and blues artists. This has always been the main uh, guitar of people like Bruce Springsteen and a lot of stars. It's still in its original condition, untouched and unaltered. The body is finished with a special finish called the butterscotch finish. And it's a, a kind of a transparent varnish over ash wood. And the beauty of this guitar is that it's never been repainted. Uh, it's just like any other antique. The first thing we look at is the finish and the surface. Never been altered. It's got a beautiful patina. It has some play wear on the neck where fingers have worn through the varnish. The fender insignia is also present. Moving down, we come to the pit guard, which is made of a single layer of black plastic. Taking off the pickup cover reveals clues about the guitar's age. We've got a pickup where the pole pieces are just even with the top of the pickup itself. They don't protrude at all. We've got bridge pieces that are solid brass. All these together with the serial number present indicated that it was made around 1953. This beautiful instrument is valued at about eighteen to $24,000. The next piece leaves the appraiser in awe. I always thought I was the ultimate music fan until I met you today. This guest brings his special guitar, which has about 150 autographs of various musicians on it. Everyone from Johnny Cash to Johnny Winter, and it took you 16 years to accrue these. These autographs cover every genre, from jazz, bluegrass, and country, to rock and roll. Some notable signatures include those of Stevie Ray Vaughan, Dizzy Gillespie, Chick Corea. The fact that you have everyone from Bonnie Raitt to Don Was, John Denver, you have Timothy Leary yes. going back to the acid yes. age of the 60s, Johnny Cash, Elton John, David Crosby, Aretha Franklin, Bill Monroe, Bluegrass. This truly is a remarkable collection. The appraiser talks about the value of the signatures. 
Each one of them separately may not be worth much, but you put them all together, and that is quite a grouping. At auction, this autographed guitar is valued at about six to eight thousand dollars. What do you think about the value of the guitar? Let us know in the comments. We now move on to this next guitar, which belonged to the guest's late husband. This guitar was made by the company Gibson in 1958. It's a Les Paul Jr., a guitar series introduced in 1954. The serial number on the guitar indicates, however, that it was made in 1958. Beautiful, beautiful, clean finish. Everything is original on the guitar. It's valued at about... About a $6,500 guitar, maybe $7,000 with this condition. Really? brings this lovely guitar, which belonged to her father, a great lover of musical instruments. It's a 12-string Fender electric guitar. It was made in 1965, a time when famous groups like the Birds were still around. Roger McGuinn was playing a Rickenbacker 12-string. Gibson made a 335 12-string. And Fender said, we need to enter that market. So between 1965 and 1969, they made a 12-string. One unique feature of this guitar is its custom red color. Most of these guitars were in a sunburst finish. It's also called a 12-string hockey stick because of the shape of the peg head. Desirable guitar for two reasons. One is they sound great. Two is the necks are very stable and they're very playable. In this condition, with its custom color, it's valued at about... $5,500 to $6,000. Oh. Guitar so priceless to the guest that he went to remarkable lengths to get it back when it was stolen. The guitar was purchased in 1964 with the sum of $300. The 1964 Jazzmaster, which was made by the company Fender, has a matching body and headstock. Earlier custom color Fenders would just have the custom color on the body, but the, but the headstock would be the blonde maple. Despite the chips on its body, the guitar is in pretty good shape. Together with the amplifiers, the appraiser values it at about... A combination up to 10 grand for the two of them, or get, get fairly close. So far, this has been my favorite guitar. Which has been yours? Let us know in the comments. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is unbelievable. Next on this list is this lovely Gibson guitar. It belongs to the guest whose mother bought it for her back in 1954 when he was 16 years old. She paid $225 for it. Well, this would be the perfect guitar for Western, Western Swing, or jazz. It's a 1954 Gibson ES-175. This guitar model was one of Gibson's early attempts to make electric guitars. They really wanted to compete with Fender, who was nipping at their heels. They put a cutaway on it so you could play further down the neck. Right. They put the electric pickup in it. It's very much like a traditional archtop jazz guitar that Gibson made in 1929. It has what is called a P90 pickup, although this pickup has since been changed to a humbucker pickup. Many players still prefer it. The guitar plays beautifully and also has a very desirable, unique sound. The thing that really impressed me about this guitar, besides the fact that it is a very significant guitar in the history of guitars, is the condition. It just glows in the dark, so you took absolutely great care of it. It's valued at about... $5,500. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That is unbelievable. This next guitar belonged to the guest uncle, and when he passed, he and his brothers inherited it. It's a Fender Telecaster and is commonly called Blackguard Tellies because they were made with black pick guards during their first production years. The piece dates to 1953. During late 1954, they changed to a white pick guard. The serial number is under the bridge cover, and it shows the year the guitar was made. It's extremely rare to see this guitar with its original hard shell case still in good condition. This is just pressed fiberboard. And if it gets any humidity at all, it just starts to fall apart. Also accompanying the guitar is the Fender Deluxe Amplifier, which dates to the same time the guitar was produced. The guitar, case, and amplifier are valued at about... Even if it didn't have its original case or amplifier, would probably have a, a retail value in a specialty shop of $25,000. The case alone 
is worth $2,500 because they almost never survive. The amplifier, if being sold separately, is probably in that $2,500 range. I would have never. Uh, it's definitely going to move out of the closet somewhere a little bit more important now. Wow, I had no idea. Next up is this 1955 Gibson Les Paul Special Guitar and Case. The guitar belonged to the guest grandfather. He purchased it in 1955 for about $225. It's a Gibson Les Paul Special. It's one of the two configurations made for this guitar. It's a single cutaway. The other is a double cutaway. I've always thought that the single cutaway was a more attractive guitar. The finish is a TV yellow finish. It was made specifically in this color to look good on camera. Everything on the guitar is original. It, like I say, it's had some wear. The tailpiece is original. It's been broken, but it hasn't fallen apart. There's also some rust and corrosion over the guitar. The guitar and case are collectively valued at about between $10,000 and $12,000 in a retail environment. Wow, I had no idea. Guest brings this lovely Fender guitar and case which belonged to his father. His father was a musician and also a Fender dealer, selling Fender equipment out of his home. This is a Fender Telecaster. It is dated 1957. It has an ash body with blonde finish, maple neck, maple fingerboard, and two pickups. It is the cleanest Fender Telecaster of this period I have ever seen, ever. It's in very good condition, almost near mint. There's a bit of wear on the lacquer of the fingerboard. All the leather is intact. The strap is the original Fender strap, and it's, it's supple. They're usually all cracked up. At the back, we see the serial number, which affords the dating of the guitar. The appraiser values it at about $25,000. Uh, yeah, I'd be surprised. I, really. Making a new entry on the list is a Gretsch guitar. This guitar belonged to the guest father who bought it at a shop in Greensboro, North Carolina back in 1956. The guitar, which is a 1956 Gretsch 6120 guitar, was made by the American company Gretsch. Gretsch was always known for making fancy guitars, visually flashy guitars. It has an orange finish. One name that has put the Gretsch guitars on the map is Chet Atkins, as he was a great endorser of the brand. This particular guitar looks to be made out of what we call birch, probably veneer, top, sides, and back. The neck was maple. This is a Western motif model. It also had a beautiful strap with a metal buckle in the Western motif. The case is also original. They wanted the guitar to stand out. The white or cream colored case with the, with the leather band. When we saw you walk into the show, we said, there's a Gretsch. We knew it, <laughs> knew it from a mile awesome. away. There's slight corrosion on the pickup covers and on the bridge. It's still in pretty good condition. It's valued at about $7,500 guitar to an $8,500 guitar. Wow. We now look at this 1959 Gibson guitar. This piece belonged to the guest husband's great uncle. It's an ES-330 guitar made by Gibson. The guitar model was made between 1959 and 1972. The great thing about this guitar is it, it's first year of production. It's a 1959, and that's pretty coveted. The fingerboard is Brazilian rosewood, which is a sights material. This lovely instrument is valued at about... twelve and $14,000. Goodness. <laughs> well, that'll definitely have to go on homeowner. Next up, we look at a couple of guitars from the Rickenbacker Company Private Museum in California. This piece, which is a banjo-looking type of guitar, was commonly known as the frying pan. Well, it might look like a banjo, but it's actually one of the first electric guitars, and also the first solid-body electric guitar. In 1931, Adolf Rickenbacker and George Beecham formed a partnership to build electric guitars exclusively. It has an exquisite working mechanism. This 1931 prototype was made of wood, while the production model was made of cast aluminum earning the nickname the frying pan. It's a Hawaiian guitar. Most of the early Rickenbacker electric guitars were used for playing Hawaiian music. They're, they're called lap steels because they're played with a steel bar. 
As far as we know, they probably made at, at least a thousand of them. This is a 12-string guitar. In 1964, an early version of this guitar was given to George Harrison shortly before the Beatles recorded the song A Hard Day's Night. After this, the list of guitarists influenced by Harrison's use of the guitar increased massively. This is a 1965 Rickenbacker 3612. It is virtually identical to the one Harrison used on the 1960 U.S. tour. The guitars are valued at... One in really good condition would sell from between $3,000 and $3,500. And if you wanted to have one of those... And I do. Well, <laughs> it's going to take more than $20,000 if you're buying one in a vintage guitar retail shop. Which of the two do you like best? Let us know in the comments. Next up, we look at these lovely Fender Telecaster guitars and the Beatles photograph this guest brings. As a musician, he belonged to a pretty decent band. In a group on the road, a guy came in when we were rehearsing one afternoon and he said, I'm down on my luck, 50 bucks, you can have that guitar. So that's what I paid for it and it's been mine ever since. This other one was bought at a music store for $250 in 1964. Photographed is an original photo that was taken on February 13, 1964. The Beatles visited a lounge where his band was playing. They performed some tribute songs to the Beatles, and the group loved it. These guitars are quite special. Guitar collectors love the story. They're oftentimes buying the whole package of where the guitar has been, where the owner of the guitar has been. Wow. So the photo adds more than that to the value of the guitar. This is a mahogany body Telecaster from 1964. The wood and the finish are quite rare as most of the guitars had an alder body. It also comes with its original case. Now this one, even though it doesn't look as good, is worth almost twice that because it's a, it's a Telecaster Custom. It has binding around the edge. The standard Telecaster is just the bare edges of the wood body. These guitars and photographs are valued at... And they didn't really want me to play it on stage. I bought this in 1964 from a local music store. That guitar in a specialty shop or at auction would probably sell for $11,000. Wow. Because you do have the original case with it, so it would probably sell close to $20,000 today. Jeez. <laughs> the guest brings this Gibson stereo electric guitar, which he had since he was in high school. He bought the guitar together with the case and Rager 20T amp for $650. This is a Gibson ES-335, and it was made in 1959, as indicated by the serial number. And that's the prime year. 58, 59, and 60 were the best years for Gibson. There's a bit of corrosion on the gold. A lot of times people don't want this tremolo bar, but in this particular guitar, the tremolo bar is very desirable case is in still remarkably good condition. It's valued at about twenty and twenty-four thousand dollars. Another Gretsch guitar makes the list. This time it's a 1957 Duo Jet electric guitar. This guitar belonged to the guest husband. It's been in his family for many years, belonging to his grandfather. Well it's a Gretsch Duo Jet. Gretsch serial numbers and features are pretty confusing, but its serial number puts it at 1957. The Duo Jet was Gretsch's competitor to the Gibson Les Paul. It's been modified, as this Bigsby tailpiece was later added. It's in pretty good shape, with some decent, honest wear on it. In this condition, it's valued at about... $3,500, just okay. under $4,000. Okay. Next on the list is another Gibson guitar. This guest brings a Gibson ES-355 stereo electric guitar, which was purchased at a pawn shop in El Paso, Texas in 1998 for $550. Gibson ES-355. Okay. And it was one of Gibson's most expensive electric guitars at the time. It was believed to be owned by a local country western musician. This guitar was made by Gibson in 1963 and is one of the most expensive guitars at that time. It cost over $500 when new. That meant the signal from one pickup went out the left speaker and the signal from the other pickup went out the other speaker. These guitars became famous primarily because of two artists who played them extensively. Chuck Berry and B.B. King both used Gibson GS-355 guitars. The only downside is that as time went on, guitarists decided that the stereo was kind of a 
a funky attribute that they didn't want to use. So a lot of people took out the veritone switch, which didn't add much. As a result of the modifications done to these pieces, it's always rare to find the guitar in its original condition. At auction, it's valued at about $7,000. Quite a uh, good investment. Definitely. Next up is this beautiful Gibson guitar. It belonged to the guest's father. This is a 1952 Gibson ES-295 electric guitar. Together with the case, it's valued at around $300 at that time. It was intended to be a stage guitar with a gleaming gold lacquer finish and floral pit guard design. It definitely was a fashion statement from the beginning. You may have heard of Les Paul and Mary Ford. Les Paul's the one who, you know, designed the early solid body electrics. Well, Mary Ford played this model when they performed together around that okay. same period. And later, Scotty Moore, who was the guitar player for Elvis Presley, used the same model. What makes this guitar unique is that the gold lacquer usually turns green when in contact with the body. In this lovely condition, it's valued at about... Which is $8,000. Wow, it's priceless since it was my dad's. And, exactly. Yeah. We move on to this Gibson Les Paul guitar. The guest bought it in the 1960s from a kid who didn't need it for $85. As a Les Paul Jr., this was a fairly inexpensive model at that time. It was made in 1960. It's an extremely well-built model and has become popular among players. It's, it's as good to play today as it was the day it was made. It's still in very good condition. It's valued at about... $5,500 to $6,000. Oh, that sounds very nice. <laughs> That's a good investment. The guest brings this special guitar she bought as a present for her husband. She bought it at an auction for $1,000. It's a Gibson SG Special. It began as a modified version of the Les Paul model in a bid to modernize and give it a new style. In 1962, however, it became the SG model. Beautiful design that we recognize as sort of iconic to the 1960s, and they're still making it to this day. The whole body and neck are made of mahogany, a very thin piece for the body and a very long, narrow piece for the neck. Also, it was sold in this case which was made from cheap cardboard or chipboard. These guitars have become a great collector's item because due to their fragile state, it's very rare to see a piece in very good condition. These guitars have become sought after collector's items due to their fragility, making it rare to find them in excellent condition. It's valued at about $6,000 guitar. Wow. Just because of its condition. Wow, that's great. Draw the curtains on this series with a 1956 Gretsch Chet Atkins 6130 guitar with case. This guitar belonged to the guest grandfather. He was a country western musician in western North Carolina. He purchased the guitar in 1956. When he passed, the guitar moved to his son, his father, and now to him. This Chet Atkins model is probably the most common and sought after country western guitar. The serial number on the label signifies that it was made in 1956. The original warranty certificate and card are also available and dated. The guitar has the typical western orange finish. It's got the, looks like the cattle brand G logo here, branded in the top. It's got a western motif, Chet Atkins right there, it looks like a signpost from your dude ranch. The inlays are plain period inlays. It also has two D. Armand pickups and a Bigsby vibrato tailpiece. And everything about this guitar is original, and I think it's the nicest 6120 I've ever seen. Wow, thank you. It's got all the wonderful things that the electric guitar collectors call case candy. It still has the original strap and white case. In this pretty good condition, it's valued at about... twelve to $15,000. That's incredible. My dad would be over the moon. Now we're done. Let's see which was your favorite piece, which one had you surprised about its worth, and which you feel shouldn't be on this list.